The driver was a Lebanese driver, actually an acquaintance of the family. We got to the border, they took my mother out of the, amb the, the ambulance in Lebanon and put her inside Israel into another ambulance to drive us an hour. The Lebanese driver walks around to me and asks me if I had any money for the fee for the ambulance. And like an innocent teenager, I pull the money out of my pocket and I hand it to him and I said, how much do I owe you? And he looks at it and he says, give me 30, which was half the money I had. So I handed him $30 and I thanked him very much. And I sat in the Israeli ambulance inside Israel to drive us to the hospital, which was an hour away. The Israeli driver treated me like his own daughter. He could see a teenager who was uncertain of what was going to happen. My mother was laid unconscious in the back stretcher of that ambulance. He treated me like his own daughter with such respect and such compassion. We got to the emergency room in the Israeli hospital of its, of its fat. We got out of the ambulance and I remember taking the money out of my pocket and handing it to the Israeli driver, thinking to myself, my God, if the 10 minute drive cost me $30, I'm sure this is not going to be enough. And I handed him my money. And he looked at the money and he said, what is this for? And I said, this is for the hospital, for, for the um, ambulance ride. And he said, no, this is a free service from us to you. Keep your money and take care of your mother. I wish her a speedy recovery. And I could not believe my eyes and ears. I thought to myself, what an ethical man. What an honest man. This man could have taken my money and partied all night and I would not have known the difference. Yet he didn't. And I became very angry because I realized the Lebanese driver basically robbed me. He stole my money. And he was an acquaintance of the family. That was my first lesson. And the difference in culture and values between the Arabic culture and the Israeli culture. We got into the hospital and there were hundreds of people wounded on the floor. There were Lebanese wounded brought in from Lebanon. There were Palestinian militia wounded brought in from Lebanon. There were Lebanese Christian brought in, Lebanese Muslim brought in, Israeli soldiers brought in. And I could not believe my eyes. The doctors treated everyone according to their injury. They did not see religion. They did not see political affiliation. They did not see nationality. They saw people in need and they helped. I could not believe my eyes. The doctor treated my mother before he treated the Israeli soldier laying next to her. They took my mother to the fourth floor of the hospital where two other Muslim ladies were brought in earlier that morning. And we were not in the room but maybe five minutes and I heard all this commotion outside our window, outside our balcony. And people were running through our room out to the balcony to see what was happening. And I walked out to look what was happening. And two Israeli helicopters had just landed, taking out Israeli wounded soldiers brought in from Lebanon. And I stood at that balcony feeling sick to my stomach. I felt ashamed. I felt humiliated. After all, these people are wounded because of the war with my country. I didn't know how the people standing next to me are going to react to me. I didn't make eye contact with anyone. And then I felt this tap on my shoulder. And I looked to my side and there was an Israeli nurse standing next to me and she said, you are new here, aren't you? And I said, yes I am. As a matter of fact, they just brought in my mother to this room. And she put her arm around me and she said, don't worry, we'll take good care of her. Everything will be just fine. And I started crying. I started sobbing. Because for the first time in my life, I experienced compassion. I experienced the human quality that I knew my culture will not be able to show their enemy in their time of need. I knew if I was a Jew standing on the fourth floor or any hospital in the Middle East, I would be lynched and thrown down to my death as shouts of joy of Allahu Akbar would echo through the hospital and down the surrounding streets. I spent 22 days in the hospital in Israel. Those days changed my life, changed the way I believe information, changed the way I listen to the radio. I learned I was sold a lie by my government about the Israeli people and the Jewish people that was so far from reality. It was amazing. The same, one of the Muslim ladies with us in the room, she was there for over 10 days. And when the Israeli soldiers would come and take care of her wound and change her wound in the morning, the minute they would leave, she would look at them and she would say, I wish you were all dead, I hate you. And if you could see evil, I saw evil.
Because when you hate so deep that you are unable to be grateful to the people that save your life, you have crossed the fine line between humanity and something very ugly on the other side. I vowed that one day I will return to Israel. Because these were the type of people I want to live amongst. This was the type of culture I wanted to adopt. A culture of civilized people who respects all others, who shows compassion to others. You want to know real people? The time you know the true face of a person is when they are in a tragedy. That's when their true colors shine. And the colors of the Israelis were respect, compassion, and love. While all the Israelis from Israel heard that there were Lebanese people wounded in the Israeli hospitals and came to visit, bringing in chocolates, bringing in baklava, telling people, our homes are your home if you need any help, just come let us help you out. It was an amazing scene. And all you heard on Lebanese television, the barbaric Israeli enemy invading Lebanon and torturing Lebanon and destroying the Lebanese infrastructure. Nobody destroyed the Lebanese infrastructure but the radical Islamists and the PLO who ravaged Lebanon. And this is exactly what we're seeing today. 